This video explains the proper maintenance procedures for the DK26 engine, starting with the cylinder head section. Fuel oil injection pump maintenance, piston and connecting rod section, and main bearing shell section. First, the cylinder head. The tools needed for dismantling should be prepared and laid out as shown. Before beginning the dismantling process, turn the governor wrench handle to the stop position and close the valves on the air tank as well as the main valves. Then drain the jacket pooling water from the engine. After that, open the indicator valves on all of the cylinders. Remove the injection pump cover. Now remove the top and bottom of the cylinder head cover. Next, remove the nozzle cooling outlet. The high pressure leak oil pipe. The rocker arm oil inlet pipe. The fuel nozzle holder leak oil pipe. And the starting air pilot pipe. After that, remove the injection block. After removing the fuel oil injection block, place a cap over the injection pump so that no foreign objects enter the nozzle. Remove the nozzle holders, inlet connector and guide. Loosen the bolt on the main cooling water outlet pipe and the cylinder head to remove the main cooling water outlet pipe. Loosen the rocker arm nut and remove the rocker arms. Now remove the rocker arm T-yokes and push rods. Pull out the nozzle holder with the special tool. Remove the tightening bolts for the exhaust manifold. Attach the hydraulic jack. Screw the tension bolt in completely. Make sure the recessed part faces axially so that the jack stand does not touch the next cylinder head. Insert the hydraulic jack into the tension bolt. Screw the hydraulic jack in completely until it sits on the stand with no gaps. Then twist it back one full turn. Bring the hydraulic jack up to specified pressure. Loosen the tightening nuts. Next, turn the pump's relief valve to gradually lower the hydraulic pressure. Then remove the hydraulic jack and loosen the nut. Next, attach the cylinder head lifting tool and remove the cylinder head. After pulling out the cylinder head, put covers over the cylinder liner and intake manifold so that no foreign objects get into the engine. Also, when setting the cylinder head down, take care not to damage the combustion surface. Remove the indicator and safety valve. Attach the special removing tool to remove the valve cotters of the intake and exhaust valves. Remove the valve rotators, valve springs, and stop rings. Next, cylinder head maintenance. Mark the combustion surface of each valve before pulling them out from the cylinder head. 
Before maintenance, check for carbon buildup. Clean the combustion surface with care. Also, do not use a burner to remove carbon. The combustion surface is exposed to high heat and high pressure, so perform a color check and examine the surface carefully for cracks. The stem diameter of the intake and exhaust valves are measured with a micrometer. Also, measure the valve seat height with vernier calipers. After removing the intake and exhaust guide upper O-rings, clean the inside, then measure the guides. Record these measurements. Next, the grinding of the intake and exhaust valves. Apply oil to the stem. Apply carborundum to the valve seat to start the grinding process. A valve is lapped to its seat by tapping the valve while turning it. Be sure to use carborundum in the proper order, from coarse to fine. When the grinding is complete, wipe off the carborundum completely. Apply oil and repeat the process with oil. Finally, check the valve seat contact with bearing blue. Assemble the intake and exhaust valves in the reverse order of their dismantling. Before assembling the valves, fit new O-rings into the valve guides and apply grease. Since the intake and exhaust valves are the same size, be sure to check their markings. Apply oil to the valve stems and carefully insert the intake and exhaust valves. Then fit the stop rings. Also, the intake and exhaust valves have punched identification markings at the top of the valve stem, depending on the engine specifications. Inspect the valve spring surfaces for corrosion or contact marks. Inspect the valve spring seats to make sure there are no burrs or scratches. Also check to see that the valve rotators move smoothly. After assembly, check that the cotters are completely in place. Carefully clean sealing portions for the cylinder head, the cylinder liner, and engine frame seals, that is wherever O-rings and gaskets are to be seated. Replace the cylinder head O-ring, the intake manifold rubber seal, the push rod rubber O-rings, and finally, the starting air block O-ring. Be sure to apply heat-resistant liquid gasket to both sides of the cylinder head gasket before fitting it. Check that there are no foreign objects inside the cylinder, then install the cylinder head. Insert a new gasket for the exhaust manifold. Spray mollycoat over the bolt threads and tighten the bolts temporarily by hand. Apply mollycoat to the nut seat and screw part and attach the nut without mistaking the top and bottom sides. Attach the hydraulic jack the same way it was done during the dismantling process. Tighten the nut by tapping the tool wrench handle with a hammer. Tighten the exhaust manifold bolts. Inlet connector guide O-ring with a new one. Insert it into the cylinder head. Check the seat of the inlet connector and screw it into the cylinder head. The specified torque. Fit new O-rings on the injection block side and cylinder head side of the injection block. Make sure that there are no foreign objects or scratches on the surface of the injection block joint and seat.
Then tighten the bolts evenly to the specified torque. Next, set the piston to the combustion top dead center by turning the flywheel. Then insert the push rods and valve T-yokes. Use a dial gauge to check the movement of the valve T-yokes. Tighten the screw slowly until the needle starts to move. Then tighten the lock nut. Next, install and tighten the rocker arm assembly. Then adjust the tappet clearance. Make sure that the lock nuts are securely tightened. Replace the O-ring and attach the main cooling water outlet pipe. Then attach the various pipes around the cylinder head. Next, the disassembly of the starting air valve. Start by removing the valve cover and pull out the starting air valve assembly. Disassemble the starting valve in this order. Cotter pin, nut, piston, spring, and valve body. After cleaning each part, grind the valve together with the piston inserted into the starting valve body. Inspect the starting valve piston spring for corrosion or scratches. Now begin the assembly process. Apply grease to the piston and reinsert it into the starting air valve body and tighten the nut to the specified torque. After tightening the nut, insert the cotter pin and bend it completely. Note that the cotter pin must be made of stainless steel. Replace the O-ring and gasket and apply grease before inserting it into the cylinder head. Then tighten the cover bolts evenly to the specified torque. Disassemble the fuel oil injection nozzle. When removing the nozzle from the nozzle holder, first loosen the pressure adjusting screw. Be careful. If the fuel nozzle is loosened or tightened while the pressure adjusting screw is tightened, the nozzle may be damaged. Clean and inspect each part of the fuel oil injection nozzle. Also inspect the injection holes of the nozzle and the movement of the needle valve. To reassemble, first attach the spacer to the nozzle holder, then insert the nozzle tip. Carefully check the correct position of the pins. Spray Molycoat to the holder screw and retainer before tightening it to the specified torque. After adjusting the injection pressure with the adjusting screw, tighten the lock nut. Check the spray pattern by injecting it two or three times at the specified pressure. Do not put your hands near the nozzle opening during the injection test. Finally, check that there is no oil leakage from the nozzle tip. Next, when assembling the nozzle holder, check that there are no remnants of the old gasket on the cylinder head. Fit a new gasket to the nozzle tip with grease. Align the nozzle holder guide pin with the groove Then insert the holder slowly. After replacing the... Tighten the nozzle holder nut to the specified torque. Then, tighten the inlet connector to the specified torque. 
valve operating devices. The swing arm construction is employed as a system to transmit cam movement to the push rods. Take out the intake and exhaust valve push rods. Remove the swing arm bolt and the swing arms can be removed along with the shaft. The swing arms for intake and exhaust are fully interchangeable. If movement of the roller and the shaft is too shaky, replace the swing arm assembly. Assemble the shaft with the swing arms in alignment with the lubricating oil passages. The swing arm shaft bolt is a special bolt which also acts as a lubrication joint. Tighten the bolt to the specified torque. Fuel oil injection pump maintenance. Loosen the tightening bolt of the block for the fuel oil main pipe. Then loosen the tightening nut for the mounting with the special tool. Remove the various pipes from the pump. Then lift the pump from the engine with the lifting tool. Secure the pump with a vise and remove the stop pin by pushing the tappet roller, dismantling the pump from tappet to plunger. Do not disassemble the delivery valve. Remove the flange that holds down the plunger barrel. Now remove the set screw for the barrel. Then remove the plunger barrel. Next, inspect the barrel, the plunger, and the deflector. Check for scratches or cavitation. Wash all of the disassembled parts and clean them off with compressed air. Now, we'll begin reassembling the fuel oil injection pump. First, be sure to separate the parts from each pump without getting them mixed up with other parts. Also, replace the plunger barrel O-rings and backup rings. When inserting the plunger barrel, apply grease to the O-rings and match the set screw hole with the plunger barrel hole. Tighten the set screw. Then attach the flange. Apply molecode to the screw part and seat of the bolt and tighten it to the specified torque. Align the delivery valve knock pin and attach it to the pump. After applying molecote to the screw part and seat of the bolt, tighten the bolts evenly to the specified torque. Assemble the control rack and the control sleeve by meshing the teeth so that each recessed part matches. Then move the rack to see if it moves smoothly, stroking it from zero notch to full notch then confirm the zero point. The height of the base circle of the injection pump can be checked by tally marks between the tappet and the pump body. Use shims to adjust the height of the assembly. We'll look at the maintenance procedures for the piston and connecting rods. Prepare and lay out the tools necessary for disassembly as shown. Cover the piston with a rag and use sandpaper to remove the carbon on the inside and top surface of the protect ring and cylinder liner. 
Use a tap to remove the carbon from piston hanger screw holes. Remove the protect ring with the special tool. It can be removed easily if oil is squirted around the outside. When removing a piston, remove the connecting bolt wire and move the piston to bottom dead center. Remove the connecting bolt. Next, screw the piston lifting tool to the screw hole on top of the piston and remove the piston. When removing only the piston, there's no need to disconnect the big end of the connecting rod. After removal, put a cover over the cylinder liner so that no foreign objects enter the engine. Clean around the cylinder liner without scratching it. Measure the cylinder liner. The parts to be measured are as shown. Gently lift the connecting rod and remove the stop ring on one side. Then remove the piston pin. Inspect the piston for carbon buildup and scratches and examine the piston ring movement. Remove carbon buildup on the combustion surface with sandpaper, but do not use sandpaper on the skirt. Next, perform a color check on the combustion surface of the piston and the inside of the piston to see whether there are any cracks. Measure the following. The outer diameter of the piston the piston pin boss, the small end bush of the connecting rod, and the piston pin. Disassembling the big end bore of the connecting rod is required when inspecting or replacing the crank pin bearing shell. Turn the big end bore sideways and turn it until it touches the removing plate lightly. Screw in the tension bolt completely and fit the jack stand. Attach the hydraulic jack, making sure that the jack stand fits in the recess completely. Then turn it back one half turn. Raise the hydraulic pressure to the specified pressure and loosen the rod nut. Next, open the pump relief valve and gradually lower the hydraulic pressure. Support the big end bore on both sides and remove the nut. Carefully separate both sides to avoid damaging the crankshaft. Inspect the back surface and the joint surface of the bearing shell for fretting, traces of burning or deposits. Clean the shell thoroughly. Perform a color check on the serrated teeth to see whether there are cracks. Check for damage or fretting on the serrated teeth and rod part. Check for dents or burrs on the nut seating area and the threads and bolt seat of the crank pin bolt. Confirm that the crank pin bolts that are fitted into the upper housing are tightened to the specified torque. Without fitting the bearing shells, assemble the big end bore and fit nuts only after making sure that the tally marks and knock pins match perfectly. Reverse the disassembly procedure to reassemble the big end bore. 
Tighten the nut with the specified pressure by tapping the wrench handle with a hammer. Measure the big end bore diameter. When replacing the crank pin bolts, punch the same numbers that were on the old bolts onto the new ones. Tighten them to two or three times the B-torque equivalent to embed the threads. Then punch an A-mark onto the bolt. Now, an explanation of the assembly procedure of the connecting rod big end bore. Clean off any foreign matter from the housing and the bearing bag. Match the claws and assemble the bearing shells. At this time, do not apply grease to the back of the shells. Wipe the crankshaft clean and apply lubricating oil to the surface of the bearing shells. Face the round embossed seat toward the front of the engine and check the identification marks and nut pins. Assemble the metal cap halves from both sides without scratching the crankshaft. The bolts and nuts are punched with numbers, so be careful not to misplace bolts when reassembling. Apply mollycoat to the seat and the screw part of the bolts. Then screw in the bolts by hand until they stop. Attach the nuts in the same order as during disassembly. Tighten them to the specified pressure and secure them by tapping the wrench handle with a hammer. Check if the big end board turns easily on the crankshaft. Now, let's assemble the piston and connecting rods. Clean and air blow each part before assembling the pistons. For the rings, use all new rings and put them onto the piston with the manufacturing mark facing up. When assembling the oil ring and coil spring, place the coil spring joint on the opposite side of the oil ring butt. Assemble as shown in the diagram to ensure that the rings are put in the right order. Measure and record the clearance between the ring and the ring groove with a thickness gauge. When assembling the piston and connecting rod, match the F mark on the piston combustion surface to the round embossed seat on the rod part of the connecting rod. Apply lubricating oil on the piston pin and fit the piston pin into the piston. Then fit the snap rings into the groove. Check the side clearance between the piston and the connecting rod small end. Place the piston insert ring on the top of the cylinder liner. Apply lubricating oil to the piston insert ring, cylinder liner, piston ring, and piston skirt. Adjust the piston ring butts at 90 degree intervals. Place the crank pin at bottom dead center, then insert the piston into the cylinder liner lowering it slowly while matching the bottom of the rod part with the big end. Finally, match the knock pin. Place the protect ring so that the identification mark can be seen from the top. Spray mollycoat to the threads and seat of the connecting bolt. Tighten the bolt by hand until it stops. Tighten to torque B in this order. 1 4 
two, three, and back to one. Check the axial movement of the connecting rod, big end bore. Now, the main bearing shell maintenance procedure. First, remove the side covers. Prepare the necessary tools for disassembly. Next, remove the side bolt cap and attach the hydraulic jacks to the side bolts. Raise the pressure to both jacks simultaneously to the specified pressure. Loosen the nuts. Open the relief valve of the pump and release the pressure slowly. Remove the hydraulic jacks and nuts. Do not remove the side bolts until after the hydraulic ram is set. Fit the hydraulic ram bearer onto the main bearing cap and hook the hydraulic ram bearer into the bearer. Attach the hydraulic jacks and turn the lower wrench handle to raise the jacks until they reach the main bearing bolts. Screw the jacks into the main bearing bolts. Apply the specified pressure and loosen the nut. Open the pump release valve and gradually lower the pressure. Attach hydraulic ram 1 to the main bearing bolt. Hook the spindle of hydraulic ram 2 into the hydraulic ram bearer. Fix ram 2 to ram 1 with the bolt. This concludes the now, inspection and the maintenance size procedures. Be sure to perform these procedures according to the move maintenance manual. Move the hydraulic manual. pump lever downward and lower the hydraulic ram slowly until it stops. Also, take note of the following. When using the hydraulic rams, do not exceed the maximum allowable pressure. Remove the main bearing shell from the cap carefully. Insert the main bearing shell removing pin into the crank pin oil hole. Be careful not to let the tool slip out of the hole. Apply the bearing removing pin to one end of the upper bearing shell and turn the crankshaft 180 degrees. Remove the upper bearing shell. There's a claw for positioning the upper bearing shell. Do not rotate it in the opposite direction. Remove the upper bearing shell carefully. Inspect the surfaces of the upper and lower bearing shells for fretting or scratches. Let's reassemble the main bearing shell. The upper bearing shell has a groove in the center. Check the positions of the claw and the housing recess. After cleaning the surfaces of the bearing shells, apply lubricating oil and push the one side of the bearing shell that has no claw with your hand from the side. Fit the bearing removing pin and make sure it faces the shell's butt. Then turn the crankshaft until the bearing butt is aligned with the housing. Remove the pin when the bearing shell is properly aligned. Next, use bare hands to check for dents or residue on the crankshaft or main bearing cap. Check the lower bearing shell, main bearing cap, and position of the claw. Also, do not apply oil to the back of the bearing shell. Fit the lower shell into the cap. Apply lubricating oil to the inside of the lower bearing shell with your bare hands. Raise the main bearing cap. Screw the side bolt in completely. Then turn it back 
one half turn. Next, set the hydraulic jacks. Raise the hydraulic pressure to the specified pressure. And be certain to tighten the nut by tapping the wrench handle with a hammer. After that, use the hydraulic jack to tighten the side bolt the same way as the main bearing cap bolts.